The entirely new Toyota Grand Highlander comes standard with a 12.3 inch touchscreen in the middle, and this limited trim has a 12.3 inch screen for the gauge cluster as well. So let's take a look at how they work. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the infotainment breakdown on the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. In this video, we're going to take a look at how the digital gauge cluster works, take a look at how the touchscreen works, pair up a phone, look at Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and see if we can find any neat and unique features throughout the vehicle. As this Tesla passes, and before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. This is the limited trim, so below this you've got XLE, and above you have the fully featured Platinum. This one coming in at about $57,000, providing you a lot of what you need and a little bit of the extra goodies. But if it were me, I'd probably be paying to step all the way up to the Platinum trim for a few of the key features that you get with that model. But check the link in the description to see our full review and our other coverage on the car, and I'll tell you why the Platinum might be the way to go. Starting off right in front of us, you have this digital gauge cluster. Now, if you get a base model, you're not getting this. You're getting a smaller uh, kind of smaller screen and then with some gauge in there as well, some kind of traditional gauges. But this one tells you quite a bit of information. On the left side, you've got not quite a tachometer, but more of a power meter, if you will. This being the Hybrid Max powertrain, you can regenerate energy. And if you're slowing down and using the brakes to regen some of that, you're going to go down in the charge meter there and then going the other way either driving economically or getting yourself into the power mode it's going to increase on the left side there and show you how much power you're using you can actually customize everything you see in here using these buttons here on the left side of the steering wheel and it's not super intuitive on how to do it necessarily so you, you press right and left and you get between three different screens so you see on the bottom there now you see a three and then a one and a two, those are the different preset screens we've got, and you see different information coming up on the right and left and center screens. If I hold down the OK, then I get the ability to customize both the center, left, and right bits there. So if I take this over to the left, then I've got the options for fuel economy, EV ratio, show you what ratio of time you're driving with the, uh, the electric mode. You've got a navigation compass there, what audio you're listening to, a blank option, and then we're back to fuel economy. Toggling over here to the center, you've got map, settings, nothing, another nothing, and then uh, driving support there, so it's going to show you which cruise control mode you're using and what your following distance is. And then over on the right, you have an energy monitor option. That's going to show you whether you're using the engine or the battery and kind of what axles are using all of it. Tire pressure monitor. Oops. See, I didn't press anything there for a moment, so it actually timed out. Let's go back here. You got tire pressure monitor. All wheel drive, show you how much power is going to each wheel. Another blank screen option. Driving support, similar to what we saw in the middle there. Drive info, your distance and your time driving. And then a trip A right there. So you can set up these screens, and then once you save them, either by letting it time out or holding the OK button, go back. You just gotta let it let it time out by not touching anything. Then you can cycle through the, the three different preset screens as you have them set up. Also, if you just simply press the OK button one time, then those fake gauges go away and you get larger displays of those three different screens that you customized before. And then on the top there, you've got a digital speed readout, which gear you're in, clock up on the top right, fuel and distance to empty on the bottom right, and how much charge you have in your battery down there as well. And then bottom left, you've got coolant temperature and your tripometer, which you can cycle through right here with the auto and trip button. Over there, you also see the ability to brighten and dim your gauges. Okay, coming over to the center touchscreen. As I said, this is also a 12.3 inch display, but even on the XLE models, you're still getting it and it's running Toyota's newest infotainment software, which works quite well. Up on the top right, you have a persistent menu that's giving you your clock as well as cell phone signal strength, Bluetooth connection, and if you were wirelessly charging a device, it would toggle right there, that chai icon. You can press 
that to get your clock settings go directly there but we'll get back to those later on in the breakdown going back to our map here there's not exactly a home screen for this infotainment system instead you go between the different screens with this left toggle menu this actually goes away when you're in apple carplay or android auto but we'll go through that when we get to those sections so starting on the second top, on the very top left here, you've got your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay if it's connected. Then below that, you have the navigation. This is loosely based on Google Maps, so you'll notice traffic information. If I were to scroll down this way and get to one of the large highways here in California, I bet we could get some darker... Yep, there we are, so you see how oh, right there it's showing you darker bits, different red and orange and yellow for different traffics. You can also... Zoom in either by pinching or by pressing these buttons. You can change your perspective. So this is kind of a north up map right here. And pressing that gives you different perspectives. Bring up some information, you can toggle that traffic on and off. And then down here is a search. And that prompts your voice search, which we'll go through here momentarily. Below the navigation, you have your media screen. If you enable the audio. Longevity, that, that makes me... It brings up your radio. You can toggle through the different radio presets. If you want to see a little bit more of a breakdown on the audio system, check the link below for our JBL sound system review. You can directly tune to various radio stations. On top of that, you have Bluetooth streaming, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support, Sirius XM, Apple Music, and Amazon Music streaming built in. Below that, on the left, you have your phone screen. And when you're connected via CarPlay or Android Auto, it gives you nothing. If you didn't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay selected there or connected, then you'd be able to dial numbers and access your contacts right from there. Below that, you have a vehicle screen. This is giving you options for your climate. Now, this car fortunately has a big physical climate control down here, but you could also access some of those things through the touchscreen if you wanted to do it that way, although it doesn't seem to give you all of your different controls. It gives you all the rear controls, which is good. You can hear me increasing the fan speed back there or bringing it down and then some eco options as well as a defrost option Oops. the icer it's actually called below that you have trip information this is going to give you average speed and fuel economy over the last 15 minutes of driving as well as each day that you actually press this update it'll save uh, an average right there for how efficient you've been you can clear that data out from there as well. Below that, you've got an energy flow screen. If you didn't want to look at it here in the gauge cluster, then you can get it up here. This will show you which axles are receiving power from either the engine or the electric drive motor. And lastly, under vehicle, you've got vehicle alerts. So this is telling me on July 10th, we had low washer fluid. And if you were to have other issues with your vehicle, you could bring up that information there. Below that, you have a settings screen. Now, we're not going to go through every setting. Some of these infotainment tests, we've been really diving into all the nuanced settings, but I'm going to try to breeze through a little bit quicker, give you more of the need-to-know sort of information. So starting right off, you actually have a profile screen, and this is something really nice about these newer Toyota and Lexus infotainment systems is that you can actually set up driver profiles. So if there are multiple drivers in your household, you can customize a profile for each person and then when that individual gets in the car the radio presets the climate presets and all the settings i think including mo for most vehicle seat settings and wheel settings will actually uh, adapt to that driver based on their key or by pressing their profile it's definitely something worth setting up if you have multiple drivers below that you can put in information you can see which bluetooth devices are connected and pair up the key right there if you were to individualize those profiles as i was saying in bluetooth and devices that's how you're going to add more devices to the car you can have up to five devices stored which isn't a ton but hopefully should be enough for you in general settings we're seeing the ability to turn on and off the screen beep if you don't like hearing the beep every time you touch it that can get that can be turned off there also a screen sensitivity option i like having that all the way up so that it's very light and easy to touch the screen as you're making your way through menus. Date and time, as I said, this is how you're going to customize your clock. Really what you're gonna to wanna to have is set date and time by GPS to be enabled, and that's going to simply have the, uh, the time being correct, whether you reset the car, the battery, you're driving through time zones, doesn't matter, the car will take care of it via GPS. But if for some reason you wanted to customize your clock, 
you could actually take all these things off and then set your clock manually through there. You also have the ability to do a 24 hour time. Change, uh, there's not really any information there for keyboard. Languages, you've got English, Spanish, and French enabled. And your measurements, you can have things like miles per gallon to be in US or change that to something like liters per hundred kilometers. Notifications, if you had any sort of notifications in the car or if you uh, wanted to turn on and off the ability to be notified for things like navigation prompts or uh, different sort of virtual assistant messages, maybe while you're on a phone call or while you're driving, you can customize those. Wi-Fi, this is how you're going to turn on the vehicle's hotspot. So if you wanted your passengers to be able to access a Wi-Fi connection if you're paying for it, this is how you're going to set the password, view the password, or turn the Wi-Fi on or off. And you can also connect the vehicle to an external Wi-Fi network. So if you wanted to download system updates, access that at your home, you'd turn that on and connect via that. Display settings, this is how you're going to change the brightness for the internal display here, the center touch screen. And you can actually have it go into a night mode automatically as well. Some people might want to have that on all the time if it's a little easier on your eyes. And you can also turn the display entirely off there, which completely disables it. And maybe if you were just cruising on the highway, dark at night, you'd want to have things as dark as possible. That's how you're going to do that there. Some settings for your camera, you can also have that be all the way bright there and calibrate for different contrast settings. That's only going to be when you have the vehicle's uh, backup camera on, the 360 cam. Sound and media, this is how you're going to change the loudness for your ringtone or new message tones. So you can have it be something really quiet or super, super loud. Also the voice commands, you can have those be at different volumes. And it's also how you're going to change the EQ for your sound system, treble, mid-range, and bass there, as well as your front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance. No super important settings left in there. Down here, vehicle customize. This is how you're going to set up a lot of those type of settings that just tweak the way you live with your vehicle. For example, how sensitive you want your automatic headlights to be, how dark you want it to be outside before they pop on, how long you want your headlights to stay on after you get out of the car, Illumination here, this car actually has white lights down in the footwells and at different parts of the vehicle, and you can choose how bright you want those to be in there. Door control, so do you want the car to automatically lock and unlock when you put it into and out of park? Or when you're walking up, do you want the car to unlock all the doors for you when you touch the door handle, or do you just want it to be the driver door? Doesn't look like you can have an automatic lock, however. And you can also adjust how loud you want the beep to be when you lock the vehicle when you're walking away. That's nice to be able to customize. AC mode with auto. What is that going to do for us? Doesn't look so important. We are going to skip it. Also, I haven't quite understood this adaptive cruise control customize. Maybe if somebody can let me know in the comments what that does. I've seen that on these newer Toyota vehicles and haven't been able to figure out what that does. Dealer info, so you can add your dealer contact information. In fact, if you buy this vehicle from a dealer, they really ought to add that in already so you can easily contact them. Other information, you can actually name your vehicle from here and reset the system. If you owned this car for a while and then went to sell it, you'd want to reset that there. Software update, you can check for updates if you're connected to Wi-Fi. And any other information you might want to have for applications you'd find in there. Okay, let's go through voice commands. This Toyota has a few different ways to access these voice commands. You can press this button right there, as I showed you earlier. You can also press this voice button on the lower left of the steering wheel. Or, if neither of those do it for you, you can use the wake word. Hey, Toyota, what's the weather like tomorrow? Here is the weather for Lake Forest, California on Friday, September 15th. Low clouds giving way to sunshine. Very nice, and then it gives me a five day forecast there on the center screen. You can also use it to set climate controls. Set the temperature to 62 degrees. Setting the driver's temperature to 62 degrees. There we are. And you can use it for navigation. Navigate to the nearest Starbucks.
The closest Starbucks is Starbucks at 2790 Lake Forest Drive. Would you like to go now? Yes. Calculating route to Starbucks. So it's not quite as quick Proceed and... to the highlighted route. Okay, calm. It's not quite as quick and intuitive as the Android automotive-based systems that we've seen in the new GM and Honda vehicles, but it's still pretty darn nice to use. Now let's take a look at how Android Auto works. Up here on the top left, press that, and then you see the entire screen is taken up by the Android Auto display. You've got your Google Maps over here in the left two-thirds, and then on the right third, you see whatever audio you've been listening to. This is Google Podcasts, but if I swipe... Well, that's actually other Google Podcast information, but if I were to go down here and bring up YouTube Music and hit our... Sh no, 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 I don't want Shuffle All. I want our Supermix. What's Supermix giving us today? Some Young Gravy. Okay, now if I go home then you're seeing your YouTube music over there on the right and your Google Maps here. Pressing Google Maps will give you full screen, should it? Oh no, it actually allows you to interact with it right here. That's kind of nice. But if I press over here on the left, then it gives me full screen Google Maps. And I have the ability to pinch and zoom and put in information. And I can even bring up satellite mode, which is pretty cool. And here's how your dialer is going to look you want to dial a number. You're kind of always running with this split screen setup, which I like about Android Auto. But how about Apple CarPlay? I can show you CarPlay here. To get back to the actual Toyota infotainment system, you see our navigation bar on the left has disappeared, so you have to press your app screen, and then on the top left you get Toyota, and that brings you back to Toyota's infotainment here. But let me show you how to pair up an iPhone, and then I can show you how Apple CarPlay looks. Coming over here to my phone, I'm going to bring up the settings screen and go to Bluetooth, Leave that open, and then over here on the car, I'm gonna to go to phone, devices, manage devices, and add another device. And then I'm going to press search for devices, and right there you see Charlie's iPhone. Select that, I'm gonna get a prompt on the device for pairing code. Press pair, and I also press okay on the car. Down on the device, I have to agree to any of the prompts that come up, and I also, right here, enable CarPlay, press yes on the vehicle. It's kind of a back and forth, going back and forth between the two different devices, agreeing to everything. And there we are, CarPlay coming up full screen. There's our home screen there, looking good. Press this, and we've got Google Maps. No pinch to zoom abilities with Apple CarPlay, but that's how it's gonna look, and I don't think you can do, sat oh, you, you can do satellite, okay. There you've got satellite right there. Here's your YouTube music. Again, taking up the whole screen. What do we got Supermix going for the iPhone? Some Doja. And here's your dialer right there. Same method to get home to Toyota. Back we are. So there it is, the 12.3 inch touchscreen here in the Grand Highlander. It works well, it's a decent reach for the driver and passenger and looks pretty good too. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get to them, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.